What's going on YouTube? This is Levi at Old Iron Off Road. Out here in the shop today with a, a customer project. We've got a, a Dana 44 that was brought to us for a locker install, ring and pinion set up uh, along with a cut and turn. Thought I'd take this opportunity to go ahead and throw our two cents on, on the uh, whole how-to cut and turn thingy. Um, I'm sure if you Google around, you can find some videos and some information on how to do your own cut and turn. Um, again, I thought I would take this chance to uh, go ahead and throw our two cents in the mix. Um, we've been working on scouts since probably sometime in 2004. So a cut and turn is something that we've done plenty of. Um, I think even my first scout, I did a spring over on it, which uh, obviously if you're going to do a spring over on the stock Dana 44 axle, a cut and turn is, is an essential thing. Since then, we've kind of adapted the um, idea that anything over a two and a half inch lift needs a cut and turn. And also, it's not uncommon for me to throw a cut and turn at a stock suspension setup. Um, Scout 2 Dana 44s from the factory just weren't built with enough positive caster in them. Um, zero is not enough for anything with overstock tires. Um, you get you know, quick reactive steering and you end up with a shitty return to center, um, which is what you don't want in a world of lifted trucks with big tires. So, um, like I said, I thought I'd take this opportunity to throw our two cents in on how to do the cut and turn. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying that if you are not a competent welder, if you are not experienced, if you've got a 110 volt harbor freight welder at your house i'm not digging on a, i'm not i'm not knocking on your harbor freight welder so don't take it as such i'm just saying that if you don't have a good machine with some power and uh the ability to run it please don't try this at home um the consequences can be your own life and the lives of others you're modifying this this front axle which is your steer axle um you will die so keep that in mind when you uh when you're doing this. Um, so basically what we're doing again is we're modifying these knuckles. We're actually putting positive caster in this front axle to slow down steering and give a better return to center, um, which is gonna entail that we cut these welds loose and rotate the knuckles back. <clears throat> One thing I've seen a lot of, I've seen people post pictures on various forums um, throughout the years. One of the things I see people doing is using a full-size grinding disc. That's definitely not a good way to do it. It'll absolutely get it done, but it's not the best way to attack it. Um, the problem with a grinding disc is you're basically cutting out this little well looking for a hairline crack. With the big grinder, you take way too much material out of the, out of the knuckle itself and out of the tube. Um, what we try to do is we try to minimize the amount of material that we take out while we're doing the cut and turn to keep material beefy within its you know factory or original tolerances we don't want to we don't want to cut out a you know a half of inch of material and have to throw it back in there with a welder we want to take out as little as possible and put back in just a, a reasonable amount of weld to tie everything back together now these things aren't only held by the weld they are also kind of a uh, an interference fit um, you know, the Dana 44s is not a super tight tolerance. Um, you get into like Dana 60s and stuff like that, cutting turns are darn near impossible. Um, not, not impossible, but they're tough without the, without the assistance of means of some kind of hydraulic force. Um, the Scout 2 Dana, or any Dana 44 for that matter, can be done with generally a sledgehammer. Um, I know that sounds um, archaic maybe caveman-ish if you will, but uh, cutting that weld out, if you get a good, if you get a good sight line on the hairline crack, um, a little bit of preheat to, to oversize this. I say preheat with caution, don't lay a torch to it until this is cherry red, metal fatigue is a thing. Um, you know, warm this up just a little bit to help you get uh, some, some relief on the tension and you can usually roll it back as many degrees as you want with the with the use of a, a three pound sledgehammer we're not out here with an eight pound sledgehammer just wailing on this thing if, if that's what it's taking then you've not got your crack cut all the way through um, but again 
I can do a Dana 44 front axle with one cutoff wheel. Um, we've done a lot of them. I, I don't even know how many of these we've done throughout the years. Uh, we've pretty much got it down to a science. Um, that being said, I don't recommend using a regular cut, a regular grinding disc. I do recommend attacking this with a uh, with four and a half cutoff disc, four and a half inch cutoff disc. You can kind of lay in there at a very specific angle, and you can kind of work right into the uh, to the point of contact between the knuckle and the and the axle tube, and really get in there and cut that out properly. And you don't gouge a whole lot of material out of the axle tube. You don't really gouge a lot of material out of the knuckle. It makes it really nice to weld back together. Um, so yeah. That being said, I thought I'd again throw in our two cents and kind of give you the the, the crash course and how we do it. Um, and uh, hopefully you can gain some understanding and for those of you that are competent enough to want to tackle this at home, we'll have some insight in what you're getting into and have a little more confidence in how to attack it yourself. Those of you that don't have the ability, we do cut and turns. Um, this is a, a, a spring under application with uh, four inch lift springs and overstock shackles. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this thing up for a four degree pinion wedge, um, which is actually gonna bring the pinion up four degrees from stock. So with that in mind, we're gonna rotate the knuckles back to where they need to be rotated and uh, keep this thing in a, in a happy position as far as caster goes and make this thing steer nice and straight down the road, even with the four inch lift springs. So without uh, further ado, let's jump into it. All right, guys, so for this part, I thought I would give you a little uh, close-up view of what we're going to do here. Um, this should give you a rough idea of how we're going to attack this thing. Um, so we're going to come in here with the grinder. We're not going to attack it at a super steep angle because obviously we're going to be cutting into the axle tube. We're not going to come in at a super shallow angle either because that's going to put us more into the knuckle basically center line of this weld bed we're going to come in at a really light angle we're going to come in at about about that we're going to come up about halfway on the weld bed this is all just a reference for general ideas and general attack angle and we're going to start about right there and we're going to gouge out a little spot we're not going to attack it just full bore and go all the way into the uh into the meat just yet we're going to attack just a small portion get some of that weld bed out of there then we're going to work our entire way around the axle tube and get just some of this extra weld surface out of the way before we really attack in there but again guys i can't stress enough how important the proper angle is coming into this too deep you're really going to gouge the piss out of this axle tube which is not what you want to do too shallow you're going to be above the above the 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 crack or the joining surface between the axle tube and the knuckle and you're going to miss the mark so this is really kind of a um a dance to find where the proper angle is um like i said this is something if it's your first time there's definitely a feel for it so go slow the crack is not super easy to see. Um, basically, you're gonna not even really be able to notice it right off the bat. A good tip to help make the crack a little more visible is gonna be as you're cutting to uh, maybe spray some, uh, some penetrating oil in there. Um, once you get to where you think you should start seeing the crack, especially if you've gouged most of the weld bed out, a couple of light taps with a hammer can flex things enough to where the crack starts appearing. Um, again, guys, like just be cautious, approach this slow. It's not a race, especially if it's your first time. Just keep in mind, this is the steer axle of your vehicle. So treat it as such and take your time and try to do a really good job. Um, like I said, we'll jump into this now. I'll do a little bit of cut and we'll take a break and I'll show you kind of where we've cut and how much material we've removed. So you kind of get an idea of where you're shooting for.
so we've got the major part of the weld profile kind of gouged out and we're starting to actually approach into the material you can see that i'm not very i'm not very deep into the actual C, only maybe 16th to an eighth of an inch but like i said the mounded up portion of the weld is all gone and we're, we're completely around the axle tube now so at this point what i'm going to start doing is i'm going to kind of refine my angle i'm going to go as low as i can and i'm going to start working my way in the idea is i want to i don't want to go super deep again because i don't want to gouge into this axle tube i want to start working my way straight in by the time i get probably a quarter of an inch or maybe three eighths of an inch past the edge of this uh inner c i should start approaching the crack so like i said i'm going to focus on one little area for now and then once the crack appears, I'll chase it around the rest of the axle tube. That way I don't end up with a big gouged up mess. So we'll uh, we'll uh, do some more um, grinding and then we'll take a break and I'll show you a video or I'll, I'll do another video and see if you can actually see where, where I'm at. All right, so we're zoomed in really, really tight on this, and I'm sure it's going to be somewhat out of focus. I don't know that I can make that actually focus any better, um, but you can start to see the beginning of the crack right there, and it didn't take very much grinding to get it there. You can actually see the crack begins there and continues on to about right in there. So now that I've got that, I'm just gonna chase it around the rest of the way. And I know that that looks like that's at an angle, but there is actually still some weld bed pulled up here. And, you know, our cut tapers in to pretty much flat with the end of the axle tube. So we're right on the edge of that crack. We haven't gouged into the tube and we were only maybe, you know, a quarter of an inch deep into the, into the sea. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and um, go ahead and finish up the uh, rest of the grinding. Get this thing, uh, both axle tubes cut up, rotated, and then we'll throw some weld on it. All right, so with a little more love, um, I've polished this surface down and cleaned all this up with a flapper wheel so that everything's prepped to weld. But you should really be able to see that crack in there. And like I said, you can look and you can tell that there's not a whole lot of difference between the plane of this axle tube and the plane of the outside edge of the knuckle. Um, the end of this pin happens to be somewhat close to a 90 degree angle. And you can see that that fits in there reasonably well without a, a huge gap um, that would be needed to to fill so this side's cut loose i've put a reference mark on there um so what we're going to do when we weld this thing back together is we're going to break clean this surface off good uh get everything all the contaminants cleaned off take a torch burn all the back side out just make sure there's not any trash left in there and we'll actually preheat this knuckle just a little bit now this is cast steel you see a lot of people on the internet saying oh you've got to use a high nickel content rod it's cast iron blah 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 this this knuckle is not cast iron i repeat it is not cast iron it is cast steel it will weld just fine with a little bit of preheat when i say a little bit i mean use your judgment it doesn't have to be glowing red 200 degrees somewhere in that ballpark is fine um and typically if you put just a little preheat in there by the time you put do your uh you know you get a little bit of preheat in a certain area we're going to start your root pass by the time you start working the root in the rest of the material will be plenty hot assuming you've got a good hot welder so anyway we're going to preheat we're going to clean preheat root and then cap so we're going to do two passes on this um and uh, i'm going to go ahead and cut the other side loose 
uh, we'll just put it on time lapse. I'm not going to do a lot of explanation. Hopefully at this point, you know, you kind of get the gist of what's going on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut the other side loose, rotate the knuckles back and get them ready to weld. And then, uh, once we buzz these things in here, we'll, we'll jump back over onto a video and, uh, we'll, we'll throw some, uh, throw some filler at it. All right. So we've got, uh, both knuckles cut loose. We haven't rotated anything yet. Um, one thing I did want to mention is you really, these are an interference fit again. Um, a three pound sledgehammer should be all that it takes to move these. Now, as many as of these, as many of these as I've done, you would think that by now I would have built some type of fixture to, you know, basically pin these and put a bottle jack underneath these. I just haven't done it. That's totally another way to go about doing that. Um, you can basically pin these to an I-beam somehow and have a bottle jack here. And you could actually just jack this uh, pinion up, this intersection up, and it should bust these loose. These should be broke loose enough already that they would rotate freely. Um, again, it's gonna take a little bit of force. Um, I've just never needed it. A three pound sledge has always done the job. I'm not telling you to get out here and beat the crap out of these things. If you're having to hit them excessively hard, either there's significant rust built up between the axle tube and the knuckle, and in which case you can actually tap these top, bottom, top, bottom, and you can knock that knuckle off. Clean the surface up lightly. I don't mean grind it down to where it's a sloppy fit because you do want some type of an interference fit, but certain situations have have required that the, the knuckle actually come off and the tube be cleaned up a little bit. Now, the majority of the time, you can hit these knuckles and they'll move. Now, you're not gonna move 10 degrees at a time. It's gonna be kind of a, a fine balance of hitting and checking and hitting and checking and hitting and checking. And what I use is, uh, you can use a, a little ball, uh, one of the little protractors with the little ball in it. You could use one of those. We use a digital angle finder. Um, basically what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna move one side at a time. I'm gonna reference where we're at on this side. I'm gonna move this side back a preset amount. When I get to that amount, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna go over to this side. I'm gonna roll it back until they both match. That's how I'm gonna achieve this. Um, one more thing to be aware of, and while I'm telling you don't beat the ever-loving crap out of these things, I mean, you can smack them, but if you're just absolutely getting stupid and galling up the, the metal um, and deforming it, then again, you may have to drive the knuckles off. Another thing to be aware of is when you're hitting these, do not hit where the ball joint uh, preload adjuster is. Um, you're going to be rolling these back, so most of the time you're going to be focusing on either this top side or the inside bottom of this one. Um, don't hit anywhere near where the ball joints hol holes are for obvious reasons. You don't want to deform those. Um, but other than that, it's pretty pretty simple. Um, I've got these broke loose where I can see the cracks clear as day on both sides all the way around. I'm going to give this side a couple of smacks and see how easy it's going to rotate. This one, I don't know. It may be one of those deals where it requires me to drive the knuckle off, clean the surface up, put it back on, and then rotate it back from there. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm going to kick back over into time-lapse mode, and I'm not going to bore you with all that. Uh, we'll get them rotated. We'll get them back in the shop and get them welded. So this one ended up having to come off, as you can see. Um, it's just the way it works out sometimes. But now that I've got it off, two good things to show you is, one, you can see some galling right there. And there's a pretty nasty gall mark right there. Um, I'd say that was when the tube was pressed on. And you can also see there, so regardless of how hard I hit that, that probably wasn't going to turn. And that may be something that you run into. So instead of, and I mean, you can see the back of this knuckle, there's a couple of hammer marks, but nothing excessive. You can see a little ding there, a ding there and a ding there. But I mean, it's not just mangled. So another thing to take time to notice here is there's no gouge in the axle tube. You can see I pretty much hit 
the bottom of that crack spot on and that's what you're after um, you want to really take your time and then you can see here there's not a really deep bevel there either so that's kind of what you're after so now that this knuckles off I'm gonna take some emery cloth. I'm gonna clean up the inside of this. I'm gonna polish this little burr down and then we're gonna put it back on and rotate it back and, uh, and uh, get it all squared away. So we've got uh, both sides rolled back. Now this number is not relevant to anything that you're doing. Um, don't use this number. This is not your number. This is my number. I know where we started in relation to where we are. So this is just to make sure that both sides are matching. Don't take this number and don't use it. Typically you're shooting for, you know, five degrees, four to, four to six degrees um, positive caster um, is where you're shooting for um, obviously if you read this magnetic um, angle finder digital angle finder you can see the way it's showing is that this center line is tilted forward which is not what you want that is not the case it is simply a reference obviously you can see that the pinion is raised way up which wouldn't be like that under the vehicle um, just take my word for it. This number is not your number, nor what you're wanting to shoot for. You're wanting to shoot four to six positive, depending on where your pinion, where your knuckle started. It's just, this is just to, to make sure that both sides match. Now, my axle tube is level. So we've got 4.6 on this side. And we're at 4.7, and if I look on the back, I'm actually kind of in line with that, uh, with the uh, C. I've also taken a flapper wheel and dressed this edge down so that I know that uh, it's not sitting on any high spots. So uh, we're gonna call that good. Um, another thing I was wanting to mention too, um, this lip on the inside of this, um, where the axle tube, where you can see where the C protrudes past the axle tube, a little bit it's about a sixteenth of an inch that's super critical if you knock this axle tube off make sure that you reset this uh, gap you don't want it flush with the axle tube you want the C sticking out past about a sixteenth of an inch so uh, from there yeah we're just gonna clean up preheat and we're gonna do some welding all right so we've got this thing tacked um, all the trash burn out of the uh, weld bed welder set <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in there. Don't do that. This axle is a great place to sit as you're doing this, but uh, make sure the jack stands in an appropriate place. So, anyway, the uh, um, everything's set and tacked. You want to tack them good, just that way it doesn't pull because obviously you're gonna start on one side. Again, we're gonna run a, a a, uh, a root pass, which we're not going to concentrate on a super wide bead. We're just going to punch a really nice hot single pass in the root. And then we'll go back through and cap it and kind of tie all of it back together. So um, one way to do this, a good way to do this, if you have somebody that can kind of rotate for you as you weld, um, is good. I don't have that. You want to try to do this in as few passes as possible. You don't want a whole lot of start and stops. Um, I've got a tack 180 degrees from each other. I'm going to weld one root, roll it over, weld the other root. That's kind of how I have to do it or try to do it, at least in two passes. Occasionally I can get a little more. Um, it's still going to be at least one start and stop. So anyway, we'll, uh, we'll throw the root in now.
Now make sure you're staying ahead of the puddle. On one side, you're kind of working uphill. Um, so you wanna make sure you're pulling your, pulling your puddle pretty quick. So I'll show you what that looks like. Hopefully you can see that. Nice tight little root joint. Now we're gonna let that side cool. I'm gonna roll over to the other side, do a root, and then we're gonna come back and cap this side. I'm sure somebody will tell me I'm doing it wrong because everyone's a professional on the internet, but we've done more of these than I can count. And by um, my count, no one's died or had any uh, axles fall apart yet. So it's a good sign. about push versus pull, MIG and all that stuff. I don't really think it matters as long as you're on the right side of the puddle. Again, I'm sure there's gonna be some welding expert that's gonna come on here and tell me I'm doing it wrong, but feel free to leave a comment below. We'll talk about it. So again, you see that. Nice tight little root all the way around. Gouged in pretty deep. I'm not undercutting, but you can see there's a ridge on the top side. There's a good tie in on the bottom. So I'm happy with that. Old big blue over there gets it done. Um, so now we'll jump back over here. We'll throw a big nasty cap on this side and uh, call it done. Yes, I just banged my torch tip on the housing. I'm not a big fan of that, but whatever. There she is, nice big fat cap.
laid in there pretty good. Same thing on the other side. That's it. So hopefully I've left you with something more than what you already knew. Um, again, if you're proficient with a welder and can be attentive and not really get you know, carried away or in a hurry when you're cutting the well bed out, there's no reason why you can't do this yourself. And uh, you will definitely improve the way your scout handles. Like I said, stock, anything above a two and a half inch lift needs it. it it's a must on anything above a two and a half inch lift, especially if you're running long shackles. Um, and anything from st stock can even benefit from it. So um, as always, comment below, any questions, like and subscribe, um, it helps us out. We're trying to move this channel to the point where it's uh, monetized, um, I'm not gonna, ever get to the point where I throw ads at you guys or anything like that. That's not something I'm interested in. But if I can move this channel to a point where it uh, provides some level of monetary gain, even if it's insignificant, that'll make me feel good. Um, but again, as always, I hope you learned something. Enjoy and please like and subscribe. Thanks.